All right, those are all the stories that we needed to cover uh, for today. So let's quickly go over and break down the NFL game from last night, the Thursday night football game to kick off week six, Bucks at Eagles. And then we'll get into our official picks for week six. So here we go. Bucks get the win here, 28 to 22. And, you know, it did seem close in the final box score. But overall, this game wasn't that close. This Eagles offense is once again struggling to move the ball consistently and score the ball consistently. They had one good game of scoring the ball consistently, and that was against the Chiefs. And now we're starting to learn that this Chiefs team isn't good, isn't good now. Their defense is trash. The offense turns the ball over. And remember, in that game against the Eagles, Eagles, Chiefs, Eagles, the Chiefs scored a touchdown on every single possession besides one where they threw the interception. So the Eagles struggling to score consistently and you know when they have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe scoring wise obviously they just are not there yet here and that was exactly what we saw last night so uh, Bucks go down and score a touchdown on their opening drive making a 7-0 then the Eagles did something really good and I thought this game was going to be really competitive like we thought heading into this game uh, why we took the Eagles plus six and a half last night on the show so they go down and score a touchdown of their own, making it 7-7. But then this is where they separate themselves. This is where truly the Tier 1 teams separate themselves from the Tier 2 teams. Tom Brady goes down and answers on another touchdown, making it 14-7. And then the Eagles could not pick up a first down for the rest of the first half, folks. They couldn't pick up a first down, let alone putting up any points. And here we go. Second drive for the Eagles, 3-0. and out. Third drive for the Eagles. Eagles, three and out. Fourth drive for the Eagles, three and out because of an interception. Fourth drive for the Eagles, inter or a three and out again. Fifth drive for the Eagles, three and out again, coming off of a Tom Brady interception. Uh, and now they're down 21-7, heading into halftime. The offense lost right there, not be a being able to move the ball. Then they caught some a little magic here in the second half, scoring a touchdown. Even their first drive out of halftime was a three and out here for the Eagles. Then they scored a touchdown after they're down 28 to seven here. Now they can put up the points when they're down 21, when the defense can lax a little bit because they're down three scores. There's not any urgency here. Here on the t Bucks defense, obviously they're still trying to stop. It's kind of subconsciously, hey, you know, we've got a lead. We can try some things. We can maybe uh, bite a little bit on some things to potentially jump some routes. We can press a little bit more. Um, so that's just kind of the overall defensive thinking. Um, Eagles take advantage and make it 28-14. to 14. Uh, Tom Brady and the Bucks kind of struggle a little bit for the rest of the game, but the defense has really already won the game in the first half. Tom Brady doesn't need to make all those throws and put up all those points. So Tom Brady and the Bucks are still looking really good. A little uh, dink and dunky here for this Bucks team, and we're going to uh, watch it uh, break down their stats in a second. But I want to quickly bring up these third down plays here for the Eagles in the first half. Were they on Jalen Hurts? Were they on the play calling? A lot of screens last night for the Eagles, and just once again, what is up with all these play calling? Everybody's like these new coaches are falling in love with the rate what the what Ravens are doing um, in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson. But folks, obviously that doesn't work. That is once again the outlier. Everybody's taking the exceptions of all these rules and making them the new new kind of rules here, and that doesn't work. That's why those were the exceptions to the rules, and that's why they really haven't worked for the last twenty years in the NFL. What the Ravens are doing with Lamar Jackson and running the ball and utilizing. Lamar Jackson's true dual threat ability right here that doesn't work for everybody it, they caught magic with the Ravens and that's it that's why all the other rushing quarterbacks really aren't working nowadays even Russell Wilson is getting a little exposed a little bit over the last couple of years RG3 couldn't kind of hang on with that and uh, uh, even Patrick Mahomes is getting a little bit of kind of figured out as well. So it doesn't work. But now we're getting Kyle Shanahan with Trey Lance. We just saw him run the ball 16 times with Trey Lance. And that's not working. A lot of just direct quarterback snaps and a lot of just utilizing your speed at the line of scrimmage. That's really not getting it done in today's game. And now we get Nick Sirianni here with Jalen Hurts of a lot of screens and all that. Quick outs, quick dink and dunks and not really 
stretching the field vertically. It's hurting the overall teams, and they're not able to do it as good as the Ravens do it. And obviously, you need to do it as well as the Ravens do it because they're barely winning games. They barely beat the Chiefs. They barely beat the Colts this week. So even if you run it to perfection, it's still a close game. And obviously, the Eagles with Jalen Hurts and the 49ers with Trey Lance, they're not close to Lamar Jackson. So I think these new core, these coaches here, these new kind of dual threat quarterbacks, yeah, they're easy to fall in love with, but when you get them out of the, on the field, they it's harder to win with them than most of these people are thinking here. So it's just real interesting. But let's quickly go to the first third down that did not go. This was the second drive, third down and three. And like we were kind of saying, these third downs were all kind of third and shorts, like third and fives, third and threes. I think there were maybe one, like third and ten. But for the most part, we're talking about like third and fives, real manageable third down pickups, and they could not move the ball and pick it up in the first half, and that's really why they lost. But here we go. Let's uh, figure out this first one here. Here we go. Down 14-7, second drive of the game here for this Eagles team and they're facing a third and three. Here we go. What can they do here? Jalen Hurts in the backfield. Dropping back to pass, pressure coming, and he goes over the middle in a crossing route, but misses a wide open read right here. Trying to you should really hit Miles Sanders out of the backfield here. You have the defensive end crashing down. These two linebackers are going with the uh with the slant routes over the middle of the field. You dump it down here to Miles Sanders toward the boundary. He tries to fit it in there. Defender makes a Big play on the ball, and that is incomplete. So Jalen Hurts, a little bit of a not great read there right here. And once again, this Eagles game plan all game, the dink and dunk shallow routes uh, screen game, it was a little way too conservative here for Nick Sirianni's offense. Unfortunate. So three and out there. Then the next drive here, still only down 14-7. to seven. Hey, still the game is open. Door is open. Third and five this time. Here we go. Jalen Hurts, third drive of the game. Third and five. Got to keep the chains moving. Got to move the ball and threaten the defense. Here we go. Plenty of time to throw. And Jalen Hurts just misses. Is this Zach Ertz there on a huge kind of hitch route uh, towards the left sideline? And this is open here. He just misses it. Once again, not great here by Jalen Hurts. Got to shoot shore up that accuracy and we have is um oh they this crapped out on us we can go back quickly uh we have the next gen passing stats here uh so here we go this is Jalen Hurts passing chart just look at everything is dink and dunk here look at all these throws to the left and not utilizing the middle of the field here look at this they're going left side to right side left side to right side and if you consistently do that then you're making it easy on the defense to just to cover one side of the field all right we have to th cover the left side we can do that we have to cover the right side we can do that so both of these quarterbacks were really dinking and dunking not really airing it out this entire game but this was the main difference this Eagles offense Offense was doing the left side to right side to right side to left side left side to right side but this is what Tom Brady did same thing with dink and dunk Dink and dunk, but he was utilizing the middle of the field. Look at all these throws, 10 yards or less. He only had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 of his, he had like 40-plus throws, more than 10 yards down the field. So, yes, Tom Brady was dinking and dunking like Jalen Hurts, but the offensive scheme was better because it was over the middle of the field where they can either go left or right. You have to guard the entire field now in Nick Series, uh, Nick Series, Nick Series, Nick Sirianni's offense last night was just cutting down the field, uh, cutting down the field in the middle and saying, "All right, guard the left or the right." Well, you're taking away half the field, so it's easier. So, not great offensive play calling here by this Eagles team. And you know when they when they had the scheme right, Jalen Hurts not executing. So unfortunate there. All right, but then we get their fourth drive, another three and out here. We'll watch this entire drive. Are we watching this entire drive? Did I not? Mark this up, right? I got a first and 10. What do we got? Oh, this is the interception play. Okay. All right. So this is uh, not a three and out, but it's a three and out. They go three plays and then the interception. So let's see Jalen Hurts' interception of last night. His fault, not his fault. Let's find out. Here we go. And once again, still only down 14-7 at home. This is a game. Jalen Hurts, plenty of time to throw. He's going deep, taking that shot. And unfortunately, underthrown, and uh, that's a pick there. So once again, this Bucks defense having all those outs of Antoine Winfield Jr. being out, one of their quarter cornerbacks being out. I'm blanking on his name. Apologies, but he was also out as well. 
And uh, there's the everybody else, next man up mentality was still getting it done here for this uh, Bucks team. So shout out to that. But yeah, Jalen Hurts trying to take the shot here and just overthrows the ball. A little disappointing here on the, with this receiver not truly competing for this ball, even though it was underthrown. Kind of jumps a little early. Okay. But that's still, you know, it's a shot there with Jalen Hurts, which we appreciate, but you can't make it a pick when you throw these 50-50 balls. You need to put it in a position where only your receiver can get it, and he just overthrows it. So, unfortunate there with Jalen Hurts once again. Once you get kind of the scheme good, Jalen Hurts can't really capitalize there. And then we've got this three and out right here, third and six. Now they're down 21-7 now, a little bit more urgency. A minute and 40 left in the first half. Jalen Hurts dropping back to pass. Plenty of time to throw, plenty of time to throw. Launches it and overthrows, not able to make that uh, throw here. And this is an open throw right over the corner. Right before the safety, it's a pinpoint throw, and it's it's a tough throw to make. I'm not saying this is an easy throw, but this is a throw you need to make right here. So Jalen Hurts' uh, deep ball accuracy desperately needs to be cleaned up. That's the worst thing about him. We believe what well, if he can start honing in the accuracy, this man is a good quarterback, utilizes legs, he makes usually the right decisions, but you got to clean up the accuracy right there. And then he had one final opportunity right here. A two-minute drive. They get the ball back because they pick off Tom Brady, which obviously is happening a little bit more often here over the last two seasons. But it doesn't matter because they're still winning games. So Tom Brady's like, yeah, I don't give a damn. I'll throw one, two, even three interceptions in a game. We'll still win. I don't care. Um, nobody takes advantage of Tom Brady's interceptions. So he's like, why am I going to stop taking these chances if nobody's going to make me pay? Aaron Rodgers didn't make me pay after three interceptions last year in the NFC Championship game. I can throw interceptions whenever I want and he's doing it here this season still and they're five and one riddle us that once again exception to every rule folks but here we go. Uh, Jalen Hurts, a two-minute drive here, basically a minute drive. The good starting field position at the 32-yard line, down 14 points, really got a score here because they, they get the ball out of halftime, right? Yeah, they get the ball out of halftime. So you score here, you make it a one-possession game, and you get the ball out of halftime, potentially to tie it up at home. Now it's a whole different ball game. But like we said, the offense was struggling here, even a three and out uh, to start the second half. But here we go. Let's watch this two-minute drive here. Plenty of time to throw here by Jalen Hurts. Shorts it to a comeback route on the left sideline. Incomplete. Once again, got to shore up the accuracy. I think they review this one and call it incomplete. Um... Let's watch this one in slow-mo. Obviously, it hits the ground. Jalen Rager has got to catch that. That one's, a, that one's on Jalen Rager. Still a tough throw altogether, but Jalen Hurts, decent accuracy right there. And once he has decent accuracy, you must make it up for him. These receivers must be playing. You know, this is what we talk about in Tier 2 wide receivers. Our classification of kind of Tier 2 wide receivers, they really don't elevate the wide receivers. Or these Tier Tier 2 quarterbacks don't elevate uh, Tier 2 wide receivers. And all these receivers here on the Eagles are Tier 2. They don't have a DeAndre Hopkins, a Stephon Diggs, um, a Devontae Adams, a Tyreek Hale. Those are Tier 1s. They got Jalen Rager, Tier 2. They got Devontae Smith, a rookie who can become a Tier 1, uh, but he's a rookie, so he's still, still in Tier 2 status. So you've got to kind of elevate these quarterbacks' play out here, and they're not doing that. So incomplete pass here. Now we're going to get a second and 10 now. Clock is stopped. You've got three timeouts. You can go wherever you want here in the field. Steps up in the pocket, escapes the pressure, throwing on the run towards the left side and throws it out of bounds. Nowhere really to go with the ball. And then we get a third and 10 right here. Once again, you can do whatever you want here. Three timeouts. Pick up the first down at solid field position right here at the 32-yard line. Here we go. Drops back to pass. Plenty of time to throw, decides to take off with it, and only gets about six yards before getting out of bounds and once again having to punt. So just this offense, another slow start here. Uh, Nick Sirianni starting to come into a little bit of a question here. I know it's still early, but you know time is running out of competing for a playoff spot, competing for this division. Um, obviously, the Giants in Washington, you don't have to worry about them in the NFC East, but the Dallas Cowboys, man, oh, man, they're looking way better offensively, defensively defensively everything than this Eagles team so there's still time for this Eagles team to catch up but the offensive play calling needs to be better and Jalen Hurts's accuracy needs to be shored up 
All righty, now let's uh, break down some stats from last night. We can start here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady. Here we go. He goes 34 of 42. 34 of 42. It's 80% completion percentage. A little bit of a dink and dunk game. We see uh, only 297 yards on 34 completions, and we see the drive. Ch uh, we see all the dr uh, uh, the passing chart here. Like we said, dink and dunk as well. But this is you know the difference of you know dink and dunk and taking what the defense gives you. Tom Brady making it work. Uh, you know, two of these touchdowns, one went uh, on a 10-yard pass, one went on a 20-yard pass. And uh, once again, this offense here for the Bucs is just there's so much to cover because there's so much talent and speed at the wide receiver and running back positions. It's hard to cover everything here for this Bucs team. So Tom Brady taking advantage of what the defense gives you and coming out with the win. Two touchdowns, one pick as well. The pick, we don't even care about Tom Brady throwing picks anymore because y'all don't make them pay. We see this time and time again. It doesn't matter how many interceptions Tom Brady throws. He will still win the game. Let me go. Uh, let me get up his career stats quickly. Can I bring these up? Is Google finally working for us? Uh, Tom Brady. I want to see. Um, here we go. Tom Brady. I want to see what Tom Brady. How many interceptions he threw last year compared to like what he was doing kind of every single year with the Patriots? Because we obviously know he won the Super Bowl last year, obviously. But last year, how many interceptions he threw? He threw 12 interceptions last year, folks. 12. His most highest seasons is 14 and 12 and 13. So a season where he threw his most interceptions, and he usually does, he still wins the Super Bowl. Why? Why? Because y'all don't make him pay for those interceptions. Still able to win games uh, while throwing 12 picks. So that's what Tom Brady does, folks. The most he's ever thrown in the season is 14. He's done it three times. So, he's not one for the picks, folks, like Aaron Rodgers. And he's already got three this season through six games. So, 6-12, uh, about uh, three more, 3-6-9. Three, so, this only puts him at nine. So, he's right on target of being less than last season. So, uh, another Super Bowl in Tom Brady's future, most, most likely, folks. Jeez. Alrighty, and let's talk about this running game because Leonard Fournette, folks, this is what I'm loving the emergence of Leonard Fournette, folks. Uh, we talk about it, you know, decently every week here because we're seeing it every single week. It's not Ronald Jones being the number one running back here for this Bucks team like it was last season. They are truly, truly utilizing Leonard Fournette, and he's getting better here, way better than he was last season, and we absolutely love it. So Leonard Fournette, 22 carries for 81 yards, two touchdowns as well, rushing for 3.7 yards a carry. It's not it's not nothing special or spectacular, but it's still real solid here. Exactly what it needs to be for this Bucks team. It doesn't need to be above and beyond because you have Tom Brady. So it doesn't need it. Does, you don't need a Derrick Henry in the backfield when you have Tom Brady. You need a serviceable, big, beefy weapon, and that's Leonard Fournette getting it done. 22 carries. That's what we love. We've got 42 passes with Tom Brady and 22 rushes by the running back. I mean, complete offense right here. So absolutely love that. Ronald Jones still getting decent production here. Five carries for 20 yards. We'll take that. Um, and then who was Tom Brady re, uh, throwing to all game long? Antonio Brown, nine receptions for 93 yards. Once again, what is different from this Bucks team this year than last year? Antonio Brown right from the get-go, getting it done. Leonard Fournette being the main back. And is this offense a little bit better than it was last year? I think a little bit. I would say a little bit. I don't think Tom Brady was leading the league in passing yards five weeks into the season. And like we said, he's got another 300 here this week. So heading into week seven, he's still going to be like the leading uh, passing quarterback here in the league. So, man, oh, man, folks. This Bucks team, they're not what they were last year. They're even better. They told us they were going to be. And we believed them, but now we're seeing it. Holy cow. O.J. Howard, their tight end, six receptions, 49 yards, one touchdown. O.J. Howard got out to a touchdown uh, first, and then it was Zach Ertz. We thought we were going to get a battle of the tight ends there, but that's all they did for basically the entire game. Came out firing hot, and then kind of just sat back in their chair for the rest of the game. Uh, Leonard Fournette, also what makes him better this year than what he was last year, catching the ball. He was abysmal catching the ball. Uh, I'm going to double-check my fact on that too. Uh, let's get that up. I want to see Leonard Fournette catch percentage last season um i want to get it get a nice uh, stat to that um, hopefully it lines up that uh, we know what we're talking about here uh but here we go last season leonard fournette's catch percentage 
Uh, 76. This season, 83. Bingo, bango. Better than it was last season. He goes 6 for 6. 6 targets, 6 receptions this season. Fantastic. And when we're talking about, you know, running backs catching the ball, we expect high catch percentage because usually they're dinking dunks out of the backfield. We don't have Leonard Fournette running, you know, 40, 50 yards down the field like wide receivers do. So, still like 76% catch percentage is a little bit low for these running backs. And, uh, you know, this year, like we said, 83%. So, catching the ball at a better pace right here to utilize it and he was the third leading receiver here for the Bucks. six receptions on six targets for 46 yards then we had Chris Godwin five receptions for 43 yards Mike Evans two receptions for 27 yards and they still put up 28 points and two passing touchdowns and 300 yards passing folks 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 this Bucks team I mean what can you say about it so, great job offensively, defensively here by the box. And then when we look at the Eagles, man, Jalen Hurts, 12 of 26. That's nothing good, folks. That's less than 50%. We got officially 46% completion percentage for only 115 yards, one touchdown, one pick. I mean, once again, abysmal offense here by this Eagles team. I don't put it all on Jalen Hurts. We still need some good play calling here. And like we said, it was ultra conservative here. Well, we don't think it needed to be. You know, we know those two big outs here of the safety and the cornerback take those shots test that weapon from the start in the middle and at the end of the game and the Eagles just never did that so truly unfortunate there they never really had a running game either Miles Sanders nine carries for 56 yards and then Jalen Hurts taking off 10 times himself for 44 yards he scored two touchdowns I'll give him credit for that one but other than that, I mean, we're looking at like the same offense that the 49ers runs with Trey Lance, and it just doesn't work. It's not working, obviously. They're not winning games. They're barely putting up the points. They're barely competitive through the entire game. But yeah, they're adamant on making it work. It doesn't work unless you're Lamar Jackson. And Jalen Hurts is not Lamar Jackson. He's got a good arm, so let him pass. Trey Lance, I don't even know what the hell that dude is yet. Um, I haven't really seen that much of him. Everything that we've seen so far is nothing great. He's worse than Jalen Hurts, in my opinion. And you're running an offense that is supposed to be tailored to Lamar Jackson. So I just don't like the offenses overall by Philadelphia in the 49ers, folks. It's not a good offense schematic. Automatically, weapons-wise, everything a part of it, it's not going to win in this league. And we're seeing it here, folks. I, you got to change this offense. You've got to change it. I won't buy. I won't buy these teams until they change the offense, folks. Um, I want to buy Jalen Hurts. I'm real close to buying Jalen Hurts, but overall, this team, it's not it. And then you just got rid of Zach Ertz. So, real worse than what they were coming into this game. So barely established the running game. Uh, who was Jalen Hurts throwing to? Quez Watkins, three receptions, 44 yards. Devontae Smith, two receptions, 31 yards, and he only had four targets. Why is that? Why is Devontae Smith only having four targets? Get that man the ball. He should be having eight to ten targets a game consistently. None of this four garbage. Devontae Smith is good. He's the best receiver. Take advantage. Zach Ertz, four receptions, 29 yards. He had six targets. Targeted the most of any other passing, uh, pass-catching player here for the Eagles, and you just traded them away it looks like they're throwing in the towel of the season kind of early unfortunate so nothing great here by the Eagles offensively yeah they made it decently competitive in the second half and I'm grateful that you know we hit the plus six and a half so thank you Philadelphia but watching this game you were like oh yeah the Eagles right from right from the get-go when they were down 14-7 you're like and then they go three and out three and out three and out you're like yeah this is not this is not going to get it done even though the Bucks were kind of going three and out three and out with the Eagles decently in the first half you're all uh, you, we know we have way more confidence in Tom Brady because we've seen him Jalen Hurts we haven't really seen him lead a comeback so Eagles offense, man. We don't like it. We don't like it. We don't like it. We've been trying to buy this Eagles team, folks. We're not Eagles haters. I mean, we talk, we say like one not positive thing about one team, and y'all instantly call us uh, haters. Like, what are y'all talking about? Um, we don't hate and we don't love any team. We talk about teams, how they should be talked about. That's what we do here on the show. Unbiased views of every single team. And we're usually right. I mean, look at our track record. Look at who we have in the top 10 here. Look who we have as number one, as number two and everybody following suit with us. I mean, we get a great perspective of truly what these teams are made of because we don't have biases clouding our judgments and we don't have any, <laughs> and we're not forced to say anything that we don't want to because nobody's sponsoring the show. So we get free to say whatever the hell we want. Um, so Eagles offense, man, it's not good. It's not good. And you're going against the Bucks who have the best team in the league overall.
offensively. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's so great. So, Bucks get the win 28 to 22. Eagles, man. I'm not buying them heading into the next week. So, not great. All right, then after the game, uh, Tom Brady, a little bit of a thumb injury, you know, kind of uh, not really talked about too much in the media because it was a short week for them. But Tom Brady says, yeah, no, I feel great. I really do. Thumb injury, no worries here. And we saw him because he was he was dinking and dunking a little bit, but I don't think that really had to do anything with his thumb. It was still great completion percentage. It was just it, 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 it's not what the game called for. It's a short week. We don't really want to implement anything big. Let's just kind of go back to fundamental offense with these great weapons and we'll put up 28 points points no problem and our defense will be able to take care of the rest of it so a uh, short week dink and dunk offense by Tom Brady but that doesn't change our opinion about anything that this Bucks team is it's a short week folks wonky Thursday night games y'all know and then Jalen Hurts after the game, uh, Jalen Hurts on struggles offense, uh, struggling offense, quote, I have to be better. And I kind of want to go into this one because we're talking about the offense in general here. So let's see what Jalen Hurts thinks about this offense and what's going on and why he needs to be better. But let's quickly read these quotes here. We get uh, one, two, uh, three, four. We'll go through them quickly. Here we go. All right, here we go. Outside of the first drive, which was aided by a 45-yard defensive pass interference penalty, the Eagles' offense had no more than three plays on six straight possessions in the second and third quarters, five three and outs, and one interception. Exactly what we just broke down. Uh, quote here by uh, Jalen Hurts. Quote, they came out and had a great plan. Like I said, it's on us to be able to adjust recognize what they're doing and combat uh, combat that my mind doesn't change on any of this in terms of the mentality that it is on us we control the destiny of everything we do everything we touch and everything we put our hands on we have to be better and I have to be better for this football team I have to be better yeah so does the offensive play calling it's not all on Jalen Hurts but he's saying the right things I mean that's what he has to say hey I have he's not going to throw anybody under the bus that's not the leader that he is and that's what we know so obviously he's saying the right things but still at the same time Nick Sirianni has to do a better job getting it done offensively. All righty. Um, let's see what Nick Sirianni has to say now. Here we go. Sirianni was asked if leaning on run pass options as their primary ground game weapon puts too much pressure on Hertz to make the correct decision instead of just calling direct run plays. He said, quote, no, I don't think so. He's been doing that a long time, that his RPO game and how he reads things. So I don't believe that's an issue. So uh, kind of interesting, different philosophies here. We see the Bears with Matt Nagy. I mean, barely letting Justin Fields control the offense. We've seen like 26. Six plus runs, uh, rushing attempts, and really kind of a run heavy. I think it's actually 30. I think it was 30 plus uh, between their two running backs. So barely letting Justin Fields run the offense. And now Jalen Hurts, like we said, you know, he's not a true rookie, but he doesn't have a full 16 game season under his belt or even like a 15 game or 10 or anything like that. He played like four or five games last year. So he is still a little bit of a rookie in the sense of on field experience. And Nick Sirianni, rookie head coach, putting it kind of a lot on Jalen Hurts to get it done and they just don't have the pieces to really complement that type of offense uh, so I really think it's more of the offense than Jalen Hurts at this point all right, what else do we get here? One more quote here by Nick Sirianni. The coach's love of receiver screens has been figured out by defenses, making that outlet futile and putting the offense behind the sticks too often. Hurts shouldered the blame for the inconsistent offense. Quote uh, by Jalen Hurts, excuse me. Quote, I think, have, I think I haven't executed well enough to win clearly. I take responsibility for that. I always take responsibility for that because the ball is in my hands every play, and I enjoy that, and I think that... That I have to be better and we see that on the third down third and shorts not hitting the open receivers are not making the right read so yeah it is still on Jalen Hurts a little bit as well all right one last quote here by Jalen Hurts here we go uh, quote, this whole year we kind of shot ourselves in the foot and we know and we believe. I have unwavering faith in the guys on this football team and everybody on this field and that we have everything we need. It is just a matter of us putting that together. It is the, it is tough, but I have unwavering faith in everyone in this building and that it will come. 
to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like that as bad as I started. It is bad, and we didn't click early. When it came down to clutch time at the end of the game, we ran out of time, and that's what this Eagles offense is. We just saw it last week when they were down. Um, who they have last week? Oh, my God. I am blanking today. I, am, I apologize, folks. But, I mean, down in the first half and then staging that big comeback. Is this what this Eagles team is? Because that's not a good – that's not a sign of a good offense if you're just down because the other team is up big and then you come back to make it look serviceable like what we saw with Sam Darnold two weeks ago against the Cowboys. Everybody was like, oh, they kind of almost beat the Cowboys. It's like, no, they didn't. They throw back-to-back -back interceptions in the third quarter and then they were able to maybe string along some things together in the fourth quarter, but they were already down like three possessions. So that's not a good offense. That's not any indication that y'all should be building what good standards are when they're coming back down from behind. It's a great in the moment and it's something that you can build upon, but it's not something that we should escalate as something so great in that this is like uh, can match with other great tiers in this league that can come out and get it done right from the get-go and don't need to be down 21 points to start getting it going into high gear. So, and it was last week with the Panthers. Uh, the Panthers are always in everything that we talk about, which is never great because they're not a great team overall, but we digress. Eagles offense needs to be better. J Jalen Hurts got to show up the accuracy and uh, they they got to put up points consistently and they just haven't done that so Eagles offense is the big problem the defense is a real solid defense here so that was Thursday night football from last night Bucks went 28 to 22.